Okay, hello everybody. Thank you guys for joining us this morning to learn a little bit more about how you can grow produce from home. I know right now it's kind of a crazy time for us, which is an understatement. And people are wanting to have more control of where their food comes from and knowing that they have food, you know, that they're growing on their own to depend on. And this is just an amazing way we're going to share with you. And I have some friends that are going to hop on and share their towers at home and what they're growing. So you could kind of see a different variety of things that you can do with these amazing gardens. So I'm going to share my, and then maybe I'll have Courtney, if you could text me just to make sure that you guys can see this. Or give me a thumbs up. Can you guys see it? I don't know. Courtney, do you hear me? Courtney, can you see my thing? Hey, yeah, I can. I was texting you. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> you were doing what I told you to do. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> All right. So this is, and let me, um, I'll minimize this so you guys could see everything. Okay, so those of you that don't know me, my name is Jennifer Capone. Um, I'm a certified health coach, and I just I'm very passionate about health and wellness. And I'm gonna let's get growing. I might forget that I have like animations in this, so if they pop up behind, I apologize. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys a quick video, and Courtney actually has one of these towers. She's gonna show us in a little bit, and this is the newest tower garden that we have is called the tower garden home Okay, awesome. Oh, wait. How do I go ahead? No. Okay. <laughs> I am not like the most technologically, which I'm saying the word wrong, advanced. Okay, so a little bit about me. So this is just some photos of myself. Um, and just to tell you a little history of how I got to this point. So um, I've been... I'm, I don't know if anyone on here has struggled with health issues, but when I was a teenager, I had issues of an autoimmune disease, but I was never diagnosed. And it wasn't until we, that's my husband and I, our anniversary, it's going to be 15 years this year, which is crazy. I think, and I think Tiffany and Courtney, maybe you both are 15 years too. Um, and then it wasn't until I had my son that I was finally diagnosed with an autoimmune condition. But I still, you know, I was put on medication, my blood work was normal, but I still had a lot of symptoms, including um, having an issue getting pregnant again. And my son, he was having issues with having allergies all the time, and he was just sick all the time. And it, uh, his pediatrician recommended a way for us to get more just plants into our diet and whole foods. And I'm just so grateful that she did because um, three months after our family started just putting these plant powders in our diet and our son, he took these chewables that had the plant powders. Um, I was able to get pregnant like three months later. And I always say that like tongue in cheek that it only kind of helps you get pregnant if you want, <laughs> it helps your body get into balance. But I'm just so grateful for that gift because I didn't, it just helped my body get into balance and then it helped our family just be healthier again. And I used to have really bad allergies as well, where I was on three different allergy medications. So this is kind of how we are today with our health. So <clears throat> today we have no more allergies. We breathe freely. We rarely visit the doctor, just well visits only, significantly lowered our cholesterol. My autoimmune issues are under control. And we have better energy and mood than in our 20s. So 
you know, I know this event is about the tower garden, but if you also, you know, are suffering, like trying to build up your immune system during this time, you know, please get with the person that invited you just to learn a little bit more about our plant powders and see if it's a fit for you. And I'm actually going to be doing an event next Wednesday night, all about natural ways to build your immune system. So if you'd like an invite for that, um, just let us know. Okay, so this was my life before the tower garden. So I did try a raised bed when um, many years ago, and I just basically, um, I had a desire to garden, but I couldn't keep anything alive except weeds, which I don't know if anyone could relate to that. I would forget to water my plants, which, you know, living in Florida can be an issue because it's a little hot here. And, um, <laughs> and I just had issues with pests, like pretty much that bed. I mean, that's just one big old weed right there. It was, it was just filled with fire ants. Like it just got overtaken with pests. And I just decided gardening was not for me. Like I'm just a very forgetful person. And I'm like, if I'm going to kill something, I'll just, I just felt bad about it. But here's my life after the tower garden. So, and you'll see when we show you how it works that basically like a child could take care of it. <laughs> so these are things that I've grown like chives, Swiss chard, green beans are amazing on this tower. Basil is like the size of your hand. So basically, I just like to brag that I think I'm a master gardener now, but I'm, it's pretty much because I'm not doing any of the work. And isn't that little baby so sweet? That was like four years ago. Okay, so <clears throat> the tower garden, we like to say is the future of growing. You could grow your produce on your patio or even indoors. And there's two different models that we have. The tower garden home that you saw the video of and this is the Tower Garden Flex. And these are things that we love about it. So it uses 98% less water than in-ground gardening. So it's better on our natural resources. It uses 90% less space. So if you were to grow the plants in there, you know, they'd be laid across on the ground and you would lose less space in your yard. Or maybe you have, you don't even have a yard and you just have like a small patio and that's, it's, awesome for that too. But the, the exciting part is it has 30% more yield and grows three times faster than in-ground produce, which was proven in a study we did at the University of Mississippi compared to in-ground gardening. And it's safe and nutritious as well. <clears throat> so here's a little video just to show you how it works, which I don't know if it's going to work or not. Let's see. Oh, it didn't work. Let me see. Let me try that again. I don't know if it's, oh, I'm thinking the video is not going to work. Ah. Um, okay, I'll pull that video up back at the end because it'll take me a minute to get in and out. And I apologize about that. Okay, so here's the two different models. <clears throat> here's the Tower Garden Flex. So this was our flagship tower garden products. So it's ideal for indoor outdoor use. It has a larger base than the tower garden home, but it's still not very large. <laughs> um, it has 20 planting ports and you could add extension. You could add an extra eight um, plants that you can grow or an extra, I believe it's 32 or say, no, I'm sorry. It's 16 with um, the microgreens and lights and wheels are sold separately. And here's the tower garden home. And those images are not to scale. They're basically around the same height. The base on this one, though, is smaller. And this is ideal for indoor use, but can also be purchased without lights if you would like to grow it outdoors. And I believe Courtney, that's going to be sharing, hers is outside. So she has removed the lights off of it and growing it outdoors. But it has a streamlined design. It's easier to maneuver in narrow doorways. It has a water level monitor, so you know when you're running low on water. It has 16 planting ports compared to the 20 on here, but then it has another 16 at the top for baby greens, herbs, you can grow strawberries. So, and you can even get an extension on top of this one. So if you wanted to add like another eight planting ports, you could have a total of Gosh, oh no, I had to do math on the spot. So that would be 20 plus the 16, 36. Is that right? All right, don't, don't quote me on it. Okay, so the base unit 
Wait, hold on one second. My switch is not on. Okay. Apologize. I realized my my computer was plugged in, but it was it's plugged into one of those outlets where the switch has to be on. So that wouldn't be good. Okay. So the tower garden flex, the base unit is six hundred twenty dollars, or it's fifty one sixty seven a month. So you could do just twelve payments, and then your tower garden is paid for. And accessories can be added for a small monthly cost. So you can add on the wheels, you could add on the lights, you can add on, like I said, eight different, eight additional ports. And then the tower garden home, the base unit, now this is a little bit higher because it's including the lights. The grow lights is 970 or 80, 83 a month. If you would like it without the lights, like if you live in Florida or an area where you can grow year round, you can have it without the lights for $55.83 per month. And I'm going to show you how that helps you save money. So I just like to talk about the environmental benefits of owning a tower garden and because it is better for the environment. And I love this quote from the Lorax. So unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing's going to get better. It's not. And I really believe in the future. And this is the future of gardening and growing our own food because I feel we are gonna need to be in more control of where our produce is coming from. So traditional gardening, most use chemicals and fertilizers that are harming the earth and tower gardening uses all natural earth minerals that are found in soil like nature intended. There's no pesticides, herbicides, there's natural things that you can do, but there is far less pests than in ground gardening. It takes up a lot of space, traditional gardening and water using more of our natural resources and tower gardening takes up less than 10% of the space, water, and nutrients of traditional gardening. So it is saving a lot of our natural resources. But here's like the main reason I think a lot of people are interested in the tower garden is because produce is expensive and it's it just keeps going up and up. And here, right here, these are just, this is a trip I did to Publix um, when we were allowed to go to the store. <laughs> Um, and I just bought four items that you can grow on the tower garden. So these four items cost me $16.86. So then what I did is I just said, okay, if I was purchasing <clears throat> these weekly, it would cost $67.44 $67 per month for only four different veggies. And only one of those items I bought was organic. Versus you could be growing 20 different plants for a monthly payment of $51.67 for only 12 months, and then your produce is practically pennies. So you'd be growing an additional 16 plants on top of that, and you could kind of see where you can redirect your spending. And here, they on average, we like to say, you know, if you're growing produce on your tower and eating it, this is kind of what it would pay for itself in around six months in what you were growing. So this is just someone that did like a six month yield and the different, every single item on here is something you can grow in your tower garden, like how many, uh, what the yield was. And he rounded the value of what you would have spent in the store. And so I just, because it is a fact, the tower garden is an investment that ends up paying you because after it is paid for, I mean, you're, that produce you're just picking off of it is like, it's so, it's, it's like pennies. And so one tower garden over 10 years would save you around 5,000 to $12,000 in produce costs. If you have three, like um, Courtney has, who's gonna show us in a little bit, you over 10 years would save you 17,000 to $37,000 if you're eating that produce off the tower. So I think that's pretty cool to share. The other fact, which people don't know today, is that produce today is less nutritious than it was years ago. So some varieties have lost 5% to a whopping 40% of their nutrient content. And we're told we, we need to eat seven to 13 servings of raw fruits, to, fruits and veggies every day. But the reason why that number keeps going up of how much we have to eat is because the produce we're buying is less nutrient dense. And that is because of the chemicals we're putting in the soil, you know, not proper crop rotation. Um, and here's just a little visual. So this was even 10 years ago, so I'm sure it's higher now. But if you had a cup of spinach in 1960, 
you would have a pretty nice amount of iron in there. Like to make the same equivalent, you'd have to eat 10 bowls of spinach to get the same amount of iron from 1960. And vitamin A in one orange, you'd have to do two, four, six, eight. I could add, okay, eight oranges 10 years ago to get the same amount of vitamin A. So that's just, I'm just, I just like visuals. They help me kind of see. So you might be wondering, okay, what can I grow in a tower garden? And these are the two that I have. I affectionately name them Thelma and Louise. And I'll show you little things that I have grown. And there are some pictures in here that I have borrowed from friends. That right there, it, that's like one, one hole of strawberries. Look how many strawberries they're growing just from one plant. But here's just some words of things you can grow, but here's some great visuals. A lot of them I got from Courtney, <laughs> who's on. So these are peppers, green beans. That's Cor Courtney's daughter, Presley, with some tomatoes. This is someone that owns three tower gardens, and she was just showing this was her harvest from one day of her gardens. These are my babies when they were little, just picking, they would uh, honestly just steal the fruits and veggies off our tower garden. And here a friend grew this amazing eggplant that she shared with us. So one of my favorite reasons to own one is they're just fun for the whole family. They really bring the family together. And Phil Gardening helps kids engage their curiosity. They learn to be resourceful and gain self-confidence. And it's also a great way to get the entire family outside, you know, for fresh air and physical activity. Um, because the kids get so excited about planting the seeds. That's my daughter there. And that's Courtney's son. Wait, hold on. I gotta take a sip. Parker, sorry, I'm drinking water. Okay. He has a, a cucumber there and some, it looks like some kale. Then my daughter planting the seeds planting the little seedlings. And look at the size of that green bean, crazy. Okay, so, and there's so many ways. What I love is sharing our tower gardens because you never know who in your family might be interested. And it's just a great show and tell. You can post the progress you're doing and get everyone kind of involved. And here's some tower gardens that I've shared in the community. They're, this is at a preschool in downtown Claremont. They have a few. This is when they were sharing it inside in the classrooms. And this was like a one day harvest we did to share. And this is at my children's school. My daughter, they're adding some nutrients and their tower, I should have put an after photo in here because their tower garden is amazing right now. And I actually have to go bring it home because they're not gonna be there for a while. And I wanna make sure we're taking taking care of that produce. And here's some that were at my husband's school. They had the gifted class was growing a garden. We have great curriculum that goes with it. So really teach the kids where to get, where our plants come from. So, and here's some tower gardens around the country. There's some, um, this restaurant in New York City uses them to for the produce of theirs. So look at that one tower, that's amazing. And this is O'Hare Airport in Chicago and they use it for their restaurants. And this is just like a little fun, but Jessica Alba has tower gardens. She likes, they make her very relaxed. And this is an interesting fact. This is um, a permanent homeless facility. It's called Step Up on Vine. It's in Hollywood, California. And Kobe Bryant was actually one of the donors of this project. He partnered with um, our company and had these installed so they would have their own fresh food, which I think is pretty amazing. So I like to end with, you know, talking about some of the challenges, <laughs> the perceived challenges. So you, you may grow so much produce, it may start to take over your children and look at this poor little guy right here, Courtney's son, he, he was like about to be suffocated by the <laughs> shard. Um, and you also, you'll never be without salad again. Like, look, that is one, that's one port of kale right there. Um, and that is a tomato, obviously some green beans. And owning a tower garden can turn children into thieves of produce like that. They just love to be watching things that are growing. They want to harvest it and they want to eat it, which is, you know, our main goal is getting them to eat more healthier things. And 
women, I have to warn you that you may never get flowers again because your husband's going to think, oh, you're growing such miraculous things <laughs> that you can throw in a vase. So why am I going to get you um, any flowers? But I want to take a minute to share. I have two friends on. Well, actually, let me just, I'll just, um, let me go back. Sorry. I have a few friends that are on, so I'm going to have them sh hop on and show their tower. Maybe I'll have Courtney, I'll have you go first. You could unmute yourself and I'll make you um, the lead person. And you could just tell us, if you could tell us maybe what you love about your gardens and just show us things that you're growing, that would be awesome. Thank you. Okay. Hi. So I've had a tower garden for um, six years now. I'm looking at it over there. I'm getting ready to walk over there. Um, but I will tell you, uh, we moved a, a, a couple of years ago. And so I took my tower down at my old house um, while I was, you know, we were in the process of moving. Um, and then when we moved into our house, we ended up having some unexpected construction. Um, and so I didn't have my tower up for a long time. And I can tell you, I absolutely appreciate um, having it up again because you do waste a lot of money at the store. I mean, I was throwing away all kinds of stuff. Uh, so I'll walk over and show you my tower right now. Um, I guess I need to flip this around. Okay, so here is the Tower Garden um, oh. Flex, right? That's amazing. That's uh, so I did have it in the house um, with the lights, and it was fantastic. It grew beautifully. Uh, it was just awesome. But then we got a pool table, and my husband said, this needs to go outside. Um, so here it is, and it's just amazing. I love it. Um, I will tell you, we eat off of it daily. Actually, I would say multiple times a day because it just has everything on it. Um, I make my husband a sandwich before work in the morning to pack his lunch and I come out and I grab fresh lettuce and put it, or sometimes I make him a salad. My daughter who is 12, she makes a salad. I, you know, since she's been home, um, she's made one pretty much every day, but she used to make a salad in a jar to take to school for lunch. Um, in the morning, she'd just come out and put it together and it's awesome. Um, I can't believe those pictures. My kids were so little then. I know. Well, um, show, tell us what, like, well, maybe while you have the camera on it, like, say, point out what things you're growing. Okay, so right here, this is dinner tonight. Um, this is what, pak choy, bok choy. I think you can say it either way. I really don't know, to be honest with you. Um, but I'm going to put that in a dish tonight. Um, and I, my husband said, I thought you were cooking that last night. And I said... Um, no, I, I want it to look pretty for this morning, um, but, <laughs> but uh, you can see where like we've eaten off of that bunch a lot. Um, and today, actually, we're going to, uh, my kids and I are going to plant some more seed, seeds um, and they, there's like, there's an open port, uh, but these are the microgreens up here. I believe I have broccoli, alfalfa, um, and radish. Mm. And I love the microgreens because they have so much nutrition in them. You're just getting like nothing but concentrated nutrition as with everything else. Um, I have a couple different types of kale, arugula. I think I have like a spicy arugula and a regular arugula and um, the Swiss chard. And I don't know if you can wow. hear it it's starting to stop. Is that now. purple basil? That is purple basil. I That's throw so that. cool. It tastes so good. I have basil. I have um, just mixed greens right here. Um, to be honest with you, I don't even know. I just grab and toss it all in a salad and chop it up. And um, it's, it's great. Um, and I really haven't touched this. I filled the reservoir this morning. It just needed a little bit of water. Um, and I think I checked the pH once this week. Uh, that was it. But um, I do have to show you this real quick. This oh, is cool. a tower I just planted. I've always wanted a tower of just strawberries. Mm. And I have one now, and I'm so excited. I planted these um, three days ago. Wow. And 
they are going to be beautiful. I'm so just thrilled with this. And we, we eat a lot of strawberries in this house. So, um, and my third tower, I'm going to put it up today. Uh, we eat a lot of tomatoes. And what I realized was I was out of tomatoes. And I, I, I don't know if you guys have experienced this, but I went to the store three times this week and it was like wiped clean. Wow. Like there were no tomatoes. There were, I mean, nothing, no milk, no eggs. Like it was crazy. I found a little bit more at Target, but, um, and right now I, you know, who, I mean, I hate to be a freak, but who's touching the produce, right? Mm -hmm. It's just an uncertain time. So, um, I'm going to get that going today and I think I'm going to grow green beans, zucchini and tomatoes. I mean, the, the options are endless. So anyway, those are my towers. No, they, no, what would you step back so we could see, um, them side by side. And I know Courtney has an extension on the one on the right. So that's why it's a little bit taller, but you could see they're pretty much similar in size. The white one is just, the home is just a little bit. And I, you see the covering the ones at the top and that's because I don't have plants up there right now. And, um, I, you don't want the sunlight to get in because it can grow algae in the, in the reservoir. Mm -hmm. So as you just have to keep those covered, but, um, yeah, that's what it's like. Um, let, and just add on, I'm going to have Brandy share hers in a second, but Courtney, if you could just say one thing about, I know people always wonder about the upkeep and if it's a lot of work, um, if you just say something about that, like. Yeah, no, I, I, like you, I tried a ground garden and I just couldn't keep up with it. I couldn't, we had misters. I mean, we, we did it all right, but the weeds just took over everything. And it's, it's something that you have to maintain constantly. And with this, um, no, I, I haven't, I really don't do that much. I mean, it's wise to just check the pH, but I bought a digital, you know, pH tester and, um, really, I, I really honest and truly don't do much to it at all <laughs> other than eat off of it. And it, it really does all the work for you. The watering that it waters itself is the biggest thing for me. It's, I mean, that's mm -hmm. huge. Yeah. So. Especially as a busy mom, you know, you have kids with busy schedules and your husband, you know, travels a lot for work. So it's like, you don't need another thing to think about. And that's what yeah. I, I didn't need anything to do um, at all. And that is the beauty of this. I mean, we are constantly running. Well, not right now, but yes, in normal circumstances, that's all we do is run, 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 go, go, go. So no, um, keeping up with a traditional gardening garden would not fit into my life well. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Courtney, for sharing. So um, beautiful, beautiful garden. So Brandy, if you're on, I'd love to hear you share yours. We have about... 10 minutes left. Uh, there she is. I'm going to make Here you. Here I am. Um, Hi, everybody. Hey, Brandy. Thanks for joining. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm here on my patio. Um, this right here is, mm. oh, I need to stand back. Oh, um, beautiful. Yeah, so this is my tower. I feel um, like I'm looking at my friend's children and I'm like, it's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> so this is about honestly about six weeks in um wow. these were little baby starters and i have more romaine um i've got spring mix over here i've got all kind of um lettuces i go through a lot of lettuce i eat a lot of it and um, my boys do eat the romaine but i also have um peas and beans i've got squash i have eggplant i've even got like some cilantro over there um I do have some strawberries that are hanging out over here. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that. Oh, um, but so there cute. are a few. I've got a few plants right in here. I've got um, a bunch of celery. I don't know if y'all have ever had mm. celery off the tower, but holy cow, <laughs> completely different. It's like brighter in color and it just tastes so good. My husband is not a celery eater at all and he was very hesitant to try the celery off the tower and now he will eat it before i will which is really cool but mm -hmm. lots of kale um things like that so i do have another tower over here that i've just started last weekend 
Um, so this is one, let me see if I could turn this just right to where you see what I see. Um, I got the sun here, so that's not really helping me out a whole lot. Um, <laughs> I lost you guys, oh, but you here it see, is. Yeah. So yeah, I'm all over the place. Um, but this is just a oh, weekend. Beautiful. Wow. I mean, look at, look at some of these. So um, that's what I love about it is um, it's easy. It's easy to keep up with. I had to let my other garden go. I've been so busy with um, some of the other things that I'm doing with my health coaching. I haven't had time. So I still have peppers and eggplant and things like that that are kind of doing their own thing. Um, but this is easy. It's like ridiculously easy. Um, I'm used to coming out and having to weed and take care of, you know, and, and a lot of upkeep. So I come out now and I just kind of talk to them and check on them and, you know, oh, that's that. about it. <laughs> um, so it is completely different. It is, um, it's different. You know, there's still something sweet about getting in the dirt for me just because I grew up doing that with my dad. Um, so I have a lot of memories attached to that, but this, like, I'm not worried about what's going to happen in the produce at the store because I'm going to be fine. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of security in that right now. So mm -hmm. yeah, there's security in knowing like there's something you could be in control of when there's so many things right now. We don't. Exactly. And that I'm still going to be providing my family with a lot of nutrient dense produce and, you know, fueling their body to help build their immune system things like that. So, um, yeah. oh, awesome. I love it. Well, thank you so much for sharing too, Brandy. And we have about five minutes left. So if anyone that is on, um, has any questions that they would like to ask me or ask Brandy or Courtney about their gardens, you can unmute yourself and, or, you know, or you could, if you don't want us to see you or hear you, <laughs> there's a chat button at the bottom where you could click on that and just enter a question in the chat. Um, so I'll just. Hey, Jennifer. I wanted to know about the pollination side of everything, because especially I believe um, the last person showed that she was growing, one of you guys was growing squash and a couple other things. Um, I see you all have them. Um, some of you have them on covered porches. So how does pollination work? Are you guys doing that self-pollination? Okay. Um, do either of you guys want to answer that? Um, I, my patio is not screened in, so I don't have that problem. I have, with my in the ground gardening, when we first moved here, I had to self pollinate my cucumbers, but I have not had to do that with the towers. Awesome. And Courtney, I know yours is in a patio. So do you, oh wait, you're on mute, Courtney, sorry. <laughs> All right, there you go. Now you're not muted. Okay, um, at, at my old house, I did not have a screen. Um, and so it was out, actually out in front of my house. Um, and occasionally I would, pollinate um, I just would take like a little paintbrush a clean paintbrush and and do it um, but I'm not I really have to do that with this um, and I'll, I'll try to update about the strawberries um, I've read different things about it about the pollination some people do it some people don't and I think it's just trial and error I, I don't <laughs> yeah no yeah, I'll add in like I've grown mine indoors and outdoors of a patio and Yes, outside, you don't, I mean, it's just like a regular garden, like bugs or, I mean, not bugs, but like bees are going to come and, you know, do that kind of work for you. But you can, um, like, there's never any harm in, like, grabbing a Q-tip and kind of, like, doing that with your zucchinis if you'd like to. Um, okay, we have three, but you could um, message us and we'll send more detail. I have other question here. Okay, what about bugs on it compared to outside to inside? Like I know, Courtney, you've had yours inside and outside. If you want to answer that, we have about two minutes left. <clears throat> yeah, no, they're, they definitely make a lot of organic products. Um, when it was outside, I, yeah, I did have some, uh, a few issues, but it wasn't anything that was um, unmanageable. You know, you will have to spray it with neem oil or, or it just kind of depends. 
Um, there's so many resources on this tower guard now and so much help. There are Facebook groups. There are, you know, different climates require different things. And um, so the, it's just such a great group of people that, ha mm -hmm. that you can go to to find out information. Yeah. On and we're like all, if any of you that are on are interested, like the whole group of us on here, just our community, that we have all the resources to help and support you. Like you're not on your own with the growing. And I'll say, mine is in the front of my house i've been growing it out there for about six months now i haven't had any pests whatsoever so i guess it just depends on there definitely a hundred percent it's going to be less than it is in ground because it's not in dirt and it's up higher but the only things i've gotten once i had some aphids on kale and it was just easily manageable i just took whatever branches off that had a lot and then i just sprayed neem oil and it kind of went away. Okay, my husband would like to know in the absence of the solution, you need to get yearly, what or where can you get a substitute? Um, <clears throat> oh, like a substitute to the nutrient blend? Is that what you mean? Okay, yes, okay. Um, Honestly, I don't know. Um, our nutrient, I mean, there are other hydroponic gardens online that have their own nutrient blends, but I'll tell you, I, I did just to do some cross-referencing research that, and theirs are a lot more expensive. <laughs> um, our nutrient blend is only $60, and I'd say it lasts me at least, it depends on like which plants I'm growing, like which might soak up more water, at least six months to nine months. The most I've ever bought our nutrients is twice a year. So after the tower is paid for, to pay 120 bucks a year to have like a thousand dollars worth of produce is just it, it's kind of like a no-brainer but um but that's a really good question jen thanks for asking okay so i am going to close if you i think it's oh yes that's thank you brandy yeah our i, I didn't mention that our nutrient blend was produced by nasa over a 10-year process and it's just pure inorganic earth minerals that are in there. There's So I like to know that it is safe and our company has huge integrity on what they do and how things are made. So thank you guys all for joining us. This is a recording that I'm gonna have you can share. We'll be doing this again Tuesday night. So if there's anyone you would like to invite or learn more or have any questions, get back to the person that invited you. And thank you guys all for joining us. Bye.